Hey everyone, it's Autumn. Today I thought I would do a video that was recently requested in my luxury haul video. If you haven't watched my luxury haul video, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that up here for you. But essentially, I spent a lot of money on makeup. <laughs> What's new? But when I purchased all those things, I had asked in the video if there's anything you guys wanted to see from me because I'm trying to get back into putting videos up on a more regular basis. So my friend Amy said that she wanted to see like a drugstore starter kit situation. So many of you know I'm not a drugstore person and there are several reasons for that. It's not just because I'm a snob and <laughs> I only like high end because to be honest with you, I love a good deal. And if drugstore makeup worked as well for me as high end makeup, I would probably only exclusively get uh, drugstore makeup. But I actually wrote down several of the reasons why just to kind of start out why I prefer high-end makeup. And I'm not doing this video to be like, high-end makeup's better, look at this trash <laughs> that's drugstore that I'm gonna show you. But I essentially just thought these products, literally this is all I have as far as drugstore makeup is concerned. I put it all in here to kind of talk about. And if I don't like something, you know, when I'm getting ready and I pull out my drawer and I use a product and I don't like it, I immediately toss it over in a bin I have here next to my desk for my friends and my family to kind of go through and pick what they want. And a lot of the times I'll use some drugstore products a couple times and those are the products that almost always end up in the bin the quickest. Not to say I don't throw out high-end makeup too, I do, but those are the things that, um, I noticed very quickly that don't work for me. So when I talk about drugstore makeup, which I'm making another caveat here, I am talking about things that you can easily access in a drugstore or like even in Ulta um, because those places are generally all over. They're more easily accessible. Um, there are a ton of affordable makeup brands that aren't at Ulta um, or you could use like Beauty Pie or a lot of those Asian makeup brands, but those aren't gonna be in this video. I can make a separate video talking about um, those kinds of products. But in this video, these are things that are just more easily accessible to the everyday person if they needed to run in really quickly and grab some of these items. All right, so back to why I prefer high-end over drugstore. The first thing is just the shade ranges and the nuance of the shades. So I am a light olive complected person and it's a rare occasion, even with high-end, for me to be able to find a foundation shade that matches me perfectly. Um, I usually have to mix foundations together or I have to just put a foundation on that's not quite right for me and come back in with like bronzer or other makeup products to try to kind of like bring it back around to match me better. But when I go into a store that's more high-end, I can swatch the products, which you usually cannot at drugstores. I can swatch those products. They even sometimes can pour some into like a little container for you to take home and try out. They give you samples. And then it's easier for me to make a decision as opposed to me buying like 15, I'm making sure I'm recording, <laughs> instead of me buying like 15 foundation shades and then like none of them working for me. And then into the nuance of the shades. So a lot of times if you're looking at drugstore blushes, you get like a berry shade, a pink shade, and a coral. Very rarely do drugstore blushes have like anything that's like more nuanced, right? Do, you don't really get a ton of nudes. Like those are your plain strict shades and then also they're like a true coral, a true pink. Like I like shades that are a little bit subdued, a little bit murky. Again, because of my skin tone, my undertones make it to where things that are pink or berry, they really stick out and sometimes they can clash or they just kind of overwhelm my face. I need something that's a little bit more subdued that kind of has like that pink to it or has that coral to it. Um, that actually looks like it should naturally be on my face. And then same things with eyeshadows. Um, the best example for nuanced shades, and unfortunately they are discontinued, are Burberry eyeshadows. They could take a sort of warm leaning shade and then just add enough of like another color, make it a little bit murky to where it almost seemed like there was a cool filter over a warm shade, or sometimes there's a warm filter over a cool shade, um, which I'll pull out a Burberry shadow and show you, but their shades are just so nuanced and beautiful. Um, they really kind of stand out and you could, they have, you know, matte shades. I think this one might have a little bit of like 
sparkle in it, not a whole lot. This comes across on the eye as a matte shade, but see how nuanced it is? It's not like just a straight up brown shade. It seems like it, depending on how thick you put this on, sometimes it seems like it leans a little bit green, but it's also warm at the same time. Um, and here it is rubbed into the top of my hand. And it's just gorgeous. They have tons of shades like this um, that kind of have that nuance. And that's kind of what I'm looking for when I get eyeshadows because I find them again to not be so stark on my face. All right, so the second reason is formula. Um, I find that drugstore formulas tend to be a little bit thicker, maybe for multiple reasons, but I like to kind of go in on my face when I'm doing my makeup in nice thin layers and build up color. The problem with drugstore makeup is about 10 years ago, maybe even more, there was that whole craze like on YouTube and Instagram of like, it's so pigmented, it's so pigmented. And at the time, that is what people wanted from drugstore makeup was more pigmentation. But it kind of caused a problem where drugstore companies, instead of actually really like changing their formulas to be like a thin formula with more pigment, they just stopped pressing the pigment or pressing the powder down into the pan is hard to where it's now more loosely pressed. So what ends up happening is you're putting these products on your face and it's just like thicker. There's more product on your face now. And a lot of the times I can tell when somebody is wearing drugstore makeup just because their face looks heavy. Um, and again, I like my skin to look like skin. And the same thing that goes for the eyeshadows when they wanted more pigment in the eyeshadows. Again, they press them a little bit more loose. I also think that uh, the gold standard for a drugstore eyeshadow back then was those wet and wild eyeshadows. And those were great, they were pigmented, but at that time I had younger eyelids. I think now if I were to try to use um, those thicker eyeshadows <laughs> from wet and wild or any of those brands, they're gonna make me look older. Um, they're gonna make bring out the wrinkles you know, in my eyes and make me look older or even crepier than I really am. So like a nice thin eyeshadow that you can build up, that is something a lot of the times that I find more in high-end um, formulas such as like Dior, which happens to be one of my favorite formulas, um, or even a lot of those sort of like baked gelée formulas of eyeshadows that tend to be popular in high-end makeup. Again, they're very thin on the lid, uh, but you still get the pigment and they're still really pretty. All right, so my third reason is now, which is so crazy, price from drugstore to high-end makeup is not that different. Um, it might be a couple dollar difference here and there, but by the time I buy multiple drugstore items trying to find something that looks good and works for me, I could have just bought the high-end item. And then my last reason as to why drugstore makeup isn't my favorite, it's the packaging. I find a lot of the time the packaging is like real plasticky and cheap, and I can't get through the whole product before the packaging fails on me. Um, and it usually it's like those clear plastic lids that go um, on a product, which I will show you when I start showing you the makeup. Um, they just start breaking off the hinges in the back. So anyway, let's get into the makeup. This is all makeup. I typically don't wear like a full face of drugstore because again, I find that their formulas are heavy, but this is all the makeup that I own from the drugstore currently. And usually I'll maybe use one or two items from the drugstore when I'm doing my makeup. And then that way I'm not layering a ton of heavy products on top of each other. So I'm gonna try to keep my layers thin and keep it pretty while talking about the products. Um, but yeah, I hardly ever wear them all together. And again, since I hardly ever wear them all together also, and I don't have a ton, I don't even know if the colors are gonna look good on my face. So we're gonna try to do our best. And I realize at this point I'm already 11 minutes in and I've done nothing. So like I already kind of showed you before, this is all of my drugstore makeup and I have multiple items in each category. So I'm going to try to talk about them a little bit and then you can kind of determine um, which one would be best for you. I know that Amy had asked for kind of a drugstore makeup kit. All of our preferences might be a little bit different, so hopefully I can kind of describe some of these items for you in a way you will know which one works best for you. Um, and then also I wanna point out that your skincare, especially when using these sort of heavier drugstore items, your skincare is the most important thing. You wanna make sure your skin is well hydrated before putting any of these on 
because if you do have like um you know anything on your face as far as like dry skin or anything this is going to cling to it it's going to look heavy it's going to look cakey on your face so i did already do my skincare and um if you want like a more affordable skincare video i can do one of those for you making some suggestions um but I am going to re-wet my face really quickly, which is just, it's a Beauty Pie product. It's this hyaluronic acid spray, just so my face feels um, nice and hydrated. All right, so I'm going to start off with a chapstick. This I purchased from Ulta. It's very inexpensive. It's the Noya brand, and this one happens to be unscented, but this lip balm reminds me a lot of the Kosas lip balm and the way it just hydrates, feels great on the lips, and I think it's actually doing something. Um, the Kosas has a mint sort of flavor, um, which I believe I do have one of these in mint too, but these chapsticks are great. I've never heard anybody talk about them, but I really like them. So that's kind of the first thing I wanna do as far as my skin prep is concerned. Um, and then I'm going to go into this. So this is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Glotion. I have the shade Light Glow. And you can use this multiple ways. You can mix it in with your foundation. You can use it as a primer or you can use it as a highlighter over top. Um, I would say that this compares um, to these Auric um, Glow Lust, which... Um, Samantha Ravindal, who is here on YouTube, that is her brand. Um, but again, her shades are a little bit more nuanced and she has a bigger shade range in those. Um, and again, the packaging is much nicer on those um, Auric ones. Um, another thing that I would say that this compares to um, would be these, which have now been discontinued because Becca went under, but it's the Shimmering Skin Perfector Liquids. I have multiple shades of these. I really like them. Um, and I'm just sad that they've now been discontinued. And I do have another shade as well, which is the Fair shade, which kind of has like a pink sort of hue to it. So my skin has a little bit of a tan, so I'm obviously gonna go with this one today. So let's go ahead and just put some here. And that's all I usually use. I don't want, again, I'm trying to do thin layers. I don't want a whole lot on my face. I rub it into my fingers and just kind of tap it over the face, like on the nose. And I put it all over. Um, sometimes I avoid this, but I don't know why I just put it there. But as you can see, it just adds like a nice sort of glow. Again, I'm not using a whole lot of it. You can definitely use more. But um, again, with drugstore makeup, thin layers are better. Revlon does have an option as well, and this is their Skin Lights Face Glow Illuminator. And it's a very similar sort of product. Even the shade is similar. I think the Revlon one actually feels thinner on the skin than um, the L'Oreal. But I don't know what's going on with Revlon if they're about to go under, so. If you can get your hands on it, definitely try it out, especially if they have a shade that's better suited for you than the L'Oreal, but I think they're pretty much interchangeable. All right, so now I have some foundation options for you. One of my favorite drugstore foundations is the L'Oreal Infallible. They do have a pretty good shade range, but again, I have found for my skin tone, it's a little bit harder to find something um, that matches that well. I find that these match me a little bit better in the winter. I can kind of get away with them a little bit more with these shades. Um, but I'm trying to figure out what shade this is. 425 Linen and 420 True Beige. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go in with Linen. I also want to point out that if foundations tend to be a little bit too orange or too yellow, because a lot of the times they make foundations orange, yellow, and kind of pink leaning. If they are orange or yellow, I can actually add this blue pigment to kind of bring it around more browny, greeny leaning and kind of color correct the orange or the yellow to make it look better on my skin. Um, I don't think I'll need that today. I might, but let me go ahead and pump some of this out onto my hand. And there it is, I think we'll be okay. And then I'm gonna use this sponge here I get these on Amazon. 
They're very affordable. I'll have them linked below if I can find them. So we're just gonna go ahead and pat this all over the skin. And you can see it is maybe a little bit yellow for me, but I think if I blend well enough, it's not gonna be super noticeable. And I like this foundation because it's thin and kind of glowy and my skin still looks like skin. So that's why this one is my favorite from the drugstore. Again, a lot of the times drugstore foundations tend to be, um, if they're trying to be more pigmented, they can almost get kind of gummy on the skin and they look cakey really quickly. And this is just a nice thin kind of formula. Another foundation option, if you prefer something quick in a stick form, I would say is this Revolution, um, what is it called? This Revolution Fast Base Stick Foundation. And this is really great, especially if you've done your skincare, you wanna kinda of control where exactly you're putting the coverage, you don't want it all over your face, um, or you're on the go and you want something quick. This one is really great. I'm the shade F6, which is a pretty good match for me on my face. My arms are like really tan right now in comparison, but on my face, I'm a pretty good match. And when you spread it out, you kind of see there's kind of like a shine to it and it still looks nice even like when spread out. So this is one that I really enjoy. This is great to like pop in your purse. Um, it reminds me a lot of either the Merit or the Westman Atelier, which these are like outrageously expensive. I mean, I still feel like these are better and I love them. Um, but if you were looking for a good alternative to these two, I would definitely say this comes pretty close, especially for the price. Um, I believe it's like under $10. So highly suggest this if you're looking for a good sort of stick foundation. Again though, make sure that your skincare is good and it's you can light it on easily when you put it on because if not, um, it's gonna look a little bit patchy on your skin. All right, and we're gonna have to ignore my eye here. So I am suffering <laughs> severely from allergies right now. I might sound a little bit congested to you and I keep sniffling. And now my eye has started to water. Ragweed right now is really bad and I'm pretty sure that's causing me some issues. All right, so let's move on to concealer. I have quite a few options here. It's gonna depend on what you can find in store. I feel like one of them is like at every place that sells drugstore items and then the others might be a little bit harder to find. So the one that I think is gonna be most accessible to most people are these Maybelline Fit Me concealers. I've been using them for years. Here I have the shade 11 Vanilla and 20 Sand. Again, you can kind of see I got these because I am obviously gonna to have to mix them. Um, and what I would say that those compare closest to would be the NARS. Um, again, this is in the shade Vanilla, which kind of leans a little bit pink. Um, but I say the formula is very close to the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which a ton of people tend to really enjoy. For me, I like a super thin formula around the eyes, and then I tend to like um, something kind of hard for acne spots. I don't have anything uh, drugstore-wise that is kind of hard for like my acne spots. And so as an example, like something that I would say is like hard, I guess or more like firm, would be like this Laura Mercier. It's like, it's just like a very thick sort of for, firm formula that sticks to whatever you put it on. You kind of warm it up, you work it in, and it stays. So that's what I prefer for any kind of, you know, acne if I have it. Um, and then also I want to point out that around the eyes, I do like a super thin formula, but that's also because I generally use two products around the eyes. I really like to use a can like a corrector before I put a concealer on to get rid of that because a lot of the times if you put a lighter shade on and you're thinking that it's brightening up your eyes, if you have um, any sort of dark circle, it's just gonna look kind of gray and stark around your eyes. So typically I like to use a corrector first and then I will go in with my concealer. So I like a thin formula. Um, I don't have a drugstore corrector though, so we're just gonna go in without a corrector. And I have three different thin formulas to suggest to you. 
This first one is the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. This is really nice, it's really thin. Um, it's really kind of, I would say it's buildable. I'm like looking for a place to swatch it. I would say it's pretty buildable and it's actually a super nice formula. And again, it doesn't look cakey at all. And it kind of has like a little bit, you can kind of see like a sort of sheen to it to kind of brighten up the under eyes. It's very, it's a very beautiful formula. Um, some other options would be this sort of L'Oreal Magic Lumi. And this is like a highlighter. So I use this a lot if I'm just kind of trying to brighten up the area, just a little something and I'm not trying to go crazy, but it's kind of like a stick with a brush on it and you just kind of put it and you kind of dab it in. Um, this is kind of like that no makeup makeup kind of concealer. You're not going all out, but you kind of want to look a little bit more fresh. And then this last one is the Ulta brand and this is the Youthful Glow Concealer. I have two shades. Neither one of them fully match me because again, it's very hard to get a shade that matches me perfectly, but I have light, warm, and fair neutral, so I tend to mix these two a lot. I wish that they had like a neutral that was like this depth, but like this sort of, um, I guess, tone. So I think though, well, let me go ahead and swatch one of these for you so you can kind of see. So if I like pull it out here, um, and we'll put some right there. You can see it's a nice, thin, blendable formula, but obviously the shade is off. But this formula is really good. I never hear anybody talk about this. All right, so let's go in with this one though, because I think this is kind of closest to the shades I have on my face right now. And um, again, it's the NYX. And I'm just gonna get it here in my fingers to start. And I'm gonna kind of dab it where I want it. I put on way too much and that's all right. And I probably shouldn't put it over here where I'm irritated because it's just gonna break up because I'm tearing up there. Yeah, see, it won't even stick to that area. Which that's not a problem with the concealer. That's literally just because <laughs> my allergies are so bad. So I'm gonna leave this for a second since I don't have a corrector and kind of let it just sit for a minute and then I'm gonna go in and blend it out with the Beauty Blender. Um, and that's a good way if you're wanting a little bit more coverage out of your concealer, if you kind of let it almost set up like this and then you blend it out, you're gonna get a little bit more coverage. So while this kind of sets, we're gonna talk about bronzers. And the first one I wanna talk about is the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. So this one comes in a little tiny container um, with the screw on cap, which is fine. Um, if I had to compare it to a sort of high end um, bronzer, like cream bronzer formula, I would say it would either be similar to the Milk or the Fenty. The main difference I would say between them is these when you are kind of like easier to spread out and I feel like this one I have to work a little bit harder to get it to spread out on my face. Um, I actually enjoy using the e.l.f. brush that is made for the putty primer and it actually just fits right in there so it's like the perfect size to get it in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my cheeks and then kind of just dab it kind of on the outsides. I use this a lot to kind of add obviously warmth to my face because it's a bronzer, but I also like to use it to sculpt my face a little bit, which I don't do a ton of sculpting um, because I find if you go overboard <laughs> with trying to sculpt your face, it's very noticeable. Um, and again, I like thinner formulas. I like my skin to look like skin and I don't want people to look at me and be like, oh, she's wearing a lot of makeup. We're gonna go ahead and get our little beauty blender here and blend out our concealer first. And then we're gonna use our sponge and kind of finish blending out where we just put that bronzer. All right, so I had to take a quick break because my camera was overheating. So I'm back, I've blended out the 
e.l.f. putty bronzer. I'm gonna spray my face with a little bit more hyaluronic acid um, spray from Beauty Pie. Just so my face is kind of like blendable again before I put on some other products since it took a few minutes. I also noticed in the mirror that I am leaning a little bit more yellow than I normally do and I probably should have put a drop of that blue pigment into the foundation to kind of bring it down a peg, um, but that's okay. That's literally going to be um, unique to my situation here. All right, so that isn't the only bronzer that I had to talk about. I have three different options for you that are affordable drugstore options. And the reason I have three options is because of finish. So this first one is a nice glowy kind of finish. This is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronze. This is one you still have to be kind of careful with because what I mentioned earlier where they press things kind of loosely in the pan so you pick up a lot of pigment. So if I put my finger in it here, you can kind of see how much I'm picking up there and it's kind of opaque. This only looks good on the skin if it's worked in and it's a nice thin kind of layer. So you can see it. And then it's like a beautiful sort of glowy bronze effect on the skin. Like kind of see back here a little bit better. It's very pretty. Again though, if you do too much, it does actually kind of hold that opaqueness from the original swatch and it doesn't look so hot. So you have to be very careful with how you apply it. The second one is more of like a skin-like finish and this is from Ulta. I've never heard anybody talk about this, but as you can see, you can kind of see like some of the pan underneath mine like kind of peeking through a little bit. It's not like peeking through, but like you can see the shape of the pan. So this one, and I'm gonna rub it in right here is a beautiful, again, I'm tan here, so you can't really, let me, um, I have two shades of it actually, so I'll, I like to wear the lighter shade because it's a very sort of subtle tan, but I do have the deeper shade. And this literally just looks like beautiful tanned skin. And then here is the, the deeper shade I have. See, why do I swatch like that? Let's try to swatch in a place where people can see it. So I'm gonna put, this is the deeper one. And then that is the lighter one. So the finish on the skin, like I mentioned, it's just beautiful satin skin-like finish. No, I haven't heard anybody talk about this and they call this the faux glow. So there's like no shimmer or anything like that into it, but it almost reminds me, or if there is shimmer, see how it's like very subtle, but it almost reminds me of like the finish of an ambient lighting powder. So I really, really enjoy these. And then if you were looking for something on the more matte side, I would say Try this from Juvia's Place. You can get this at Ulta. And the perfect thing about this is I can wear this in the winter and I lean more towards this lighter shade. And then in the summer, I go to this one. So you have two options in this one. And I think, oh, I wouldn't say it's the most affordable, but it's very affordable. And it reminded me of this from Victoria Beckham. So, I mean, the shades aren't exact, but kind of the same thing when you are looking for, like the Victoria Beckham is, is like a yellow sort of bronze. And then this one is almost like a neutral, almost like this leans a little bit more cool. But anyway, if you're looking for something like that to where you can kind of have the same bronzer year round and you adjust, either one is great but this is way more affordable. So I think, I'm like looking at my face here. I think I'm gonna go in, do I wanna go with this one? You know what, I'm gonna go in with the Ulta one because it looks like nothing in the pan, 
but it's actually really beautiful. So I just need to find a brush to apply it. Okay, I'm gonna use this Laura Mercier bronzer brush. I like to use a blush brush with it sometimes too if I wanna be like, I guess more precise as to where I put it. But I'm gonna go in with this, have it on here. Just kind of start working it into the skin. And you can see it adds a little something without being too much. And this is the lighter shade, by the way, and I am more tan now. But I like that because I sometimes feel if I go overboard with a darker shade, it's too much. This is also perfect if you're like me, the rest of your body is tan, and then your neck and your face are kind of white. You can kind of run it along the neck and it's not too obvious or dirty looking. All right, so done with the bronzer. Then I wanna talk about blush. I have a cream blush option from Flower Beauty. It reminds me of the Glossier Cloud Paints. And I have the shade in the Flower Beauty Blush Balm in Pinched. And it's actually not too, too far off from the shade Dusk. Um, from Glossier. But you can see Dusk is a little bit more deep and more warm. And then this one is obviously lighter and more coral. Like I mentioned, high-end brands tend to uh, have a little bit better sort of like nuance when it comes to shades. Although for drugstore, I do find this light peach to be pretty nuanced. So I'm gonna kind of spread them out so you can see. And the formulas are very similar. Both really pretty and dewy with that kind of like sheer quality. There you go. Obviously they're not color dupes, but I do find them to be pretty similar. I wonder if this one in Beam from Glossier is closer to that one. Right, compared to Beam, so now this is Beam and then this is the flower one. And Beam is brighter. I'm gonna spray my face again and you guys are probably like, oh my gosh, enough with spraying your face. But I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna maybe use another spray because I'm wondering. I'm gonna spray with MAC Fix Plus. Sorry, it's not drugstore. Um, but I'm gonna spray my face so the powders kind of like settle and I dampen them because I think I do wanna to try to put this liquid blush on. And again, I'm just gonna use this beauty blender and kind of dab everything. All right, and then we're gonna hop into this cream blush. So there are, again, a ton of drugstore cream blushes, but I've decluttered all of my drugstore cream blushes just because the shades, again, weren't that nuanced. The formulas were sometimes patchy. This is the only one I believe that I have other than, you know what, I have a Milani one in here. I have uh, this from Milani, 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 which um, these aren't bad, but I haven't used them enough to actually, I guess, tell you. Let me see, I'll swatch it if you guys are curious. Yeah, they seem pretty similar um, in formula, maybe not as glossy though as the flower. But anyway, I haven't used it enough to like tell you that you should uh, use them or not. So maybe that's something I will try out. So just look how glossy and like fresh the cheek is without giving a ton of color. Again, sometimes I find that they go overboard on the pigment and then the colors are too true. And for me, I like a subdued color where I just kind of get a hint of that to where like it looks natural. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna say that like a thousand times. It's like I just want sort of subdued, almost murky, nuanced colors. I do have two powder blush suggestions. The first one is like what everybody is gonna say and it's this Milani blush in Luminoso. It's very flattering. The formula is like a baked formula. It's nice and thin. Um, it's blendable. It looks beautiful on the cheeks. Gorgeous blush. This next one is probably one, um, I, I've never heard anybody talk about this particular color. I've heard people talk about these when doing drugstore videos. Um, but this is, I believe, their lightest blush in the shade Buff. And this is the Maybelline Fit Me in Buff. And again, it looks like nothing. It's super, super light. 
Um, but it has like a slight sheen to it. And I wouldn't say it's like duochrome, but it is nuanced enough to where if you rub it in and it looks like nothing, but here it is. See that shine? And it's just like a beautiful nude blushy shine. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of this to kind of set this blush in. And um, I'm using this brush to do it, so. This brush always loses hairs, by the way, but I think it does such a good job that I don't even care. <laughs> but it just looks like a beautiful, natural flush on the cheek with a little bit of shine. In which I used to have almost all of these colors, so obviously find one that works best for your skin tone. I just happened to gravitate towards um, this really light one because it is so subtle. Because I like to look flushed, but I don't, I want to look naturally flushed. I don't want people to look at me and be like, she's wearing a lot of blush. All right, and then I have two highlighters to talk about. The first one is the Maybelline Master Chrome, and this is the rose gold shade. I like this one because it is so shiny, <laughs> but you have to be careful with it when you put it on. I like to use a very sort of like loose highlighter brush and then just kind of buff it in. So if I just buff it onto my hand here, it's like a beautiful sort of like peachy beige color and it looks really natural on the skin, as natural as a highlighter can look. Um, and then the next option is less shiny, but it's more of a sort of, I don't know, it's like a beigey sort of glow. And here it is. And you can kind of work it in. And again, it just looks like your skin. But a caveat to that, it looks like your skin if you are light to medium. I would say if you're dark, then get other shades. I believe, I, I'm pretty sure they make uh, darker shades in both of those. So I'm just really speaking to the formula on these. And I do speak to the shade quite a bit for my particular skin tone because again, I'm looking for those nuanced shades, but I just want to throw that out. Um, I'm not forgetting about people who aren't my color. All right, so I think I'm gonna go with this one. Um, if you wanted to compare these highlighters, um, or at least this highlighter, which is the Essence Pure Nude, I don't think I actually mentioned what it was. It reminds me a lot of the Laura Mercier Highlight 01. So this is obviously more of a pearl and this is more of a beige, um, but the kind of like very subtle uh, shine finish is pretty much the same. If you found that this one was a little bit too light for you, then this would be a good alternative because it's just a little bit deeper of a shade. But anyway, I am going to put this one on and I'm gonna go in with the Sonia Kashuk brush, which happens to be uh, available at Target. It is a drugstore brand. And I'm just gonna hop in here, get a little bit about on the back of my hand, kind of work it into the brush, and then just kind of put it just on the backs of my cheeks and over the brow, like right there. I find a lot of the times people go so much with the highlight um, that it's no longer a highlight, you just have like a shiny face. And I wanna do my eyebrows really quickly because they're driving me nuts. So I do have a couple of drugstore eyebrow things, but to be honest with you, I don't find a huge difference in quality between drugstore and high-end brow things other than maybe the packaging is better high-end or again, they have better shades high-end. But honestly, if you find an, out, an eyebrow product that matches your hairs and blends in perfectly, that isn't too warm, isn't too cool, um, go ahead and get it, especially when you have like these sort of thin sort of brow pencils. I find that they're all the same. Just find a color that works best for you. So the thin pencil I have is this NYX Micro Brow Pencil, but I feel like almost every drugstore brand makes one of these types of pencils now. I know that e.l.f. even has them, um, so it doesn't really matter. 
And then I have this long wear brow pencil by Maybelline uh, Tattoo Studio. And this is like a sharpened pencil with a thing on the end. And this one's more sort of waxy, but again, I really like this shade in my brows. I think it's really good. Um, so I recommend this one as well. And then the thing that I think a lot of you might be interested in is this NYX The Brow Glue. I find this to be almost an exact dupe for the Kosas Air Brow. Um, it's kind of a very sticky sort of brow product. It And it gives you sort of like that laminated brow effect. Um, I'm not huge into the laminated brow effect and that's just because of the way my brows grow. I don't think that looks the best on me. But as far as a sort of brow gel that holds everything in place, I really like it. So I'm gonna go in first with the NYX, uh, the brow glue. And I like this kind of product because even though I don't like the laminated brow effect, I like that it stays where you put it, but if you actually like start to pencil it in like I'm about to do after the fact, I can kind of then like move the hairs exactly where I want them to be and then they'll stay from there. And I find that I get a better brow that way. Now I'm gonna go in with this NYX uh, brow pencil and I'm gonna kind of start filling in the bald spot. So I like to draw a line, or this is what I've recently been doing. I draw a line here at the bottom and then I kind of come across and I have like a gap where there's no hair here because I went a little bit crazy in the 90s and just attacked my brows. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shape and fill in this area up here. Um, and then just kind of pushing up a little bit and just kind of moving those hairs around now to where it kind of looks more, I don't know, natural. I think I'm pretty much okay with that brow. So then same thing over here, I'm gonna draw a line at the bottom. Kind of come up. I like to move these brows closer to the center because on this side, my brows come to where they're supposed to come to, but on this side, they're like a millimeter short. So I just kind of like to move them over that way. And then I kind of have a bald patch on the top up here and I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. And I feel that's good enough. I will say that a lot of the times, because if you notice kind of how shiny my brows are, I like to kind of get rid of the shininess and I will usually run a powder through them, but I don't believe that I have a drugstore powder. Um, where's that other drugstore pencil? So I'll run a powder through them or you could use something that's more pomade like this pencil right here that I, the first one I showed you, which is the Tattoo Studio pencil. And I'm just gonna kind of run that through some of those more shiny areas too. Kind of just over. And since it's like a more of a pomade product, it's gonna look less shiny. All right, so let's talk about eyeshadows. The first thing I wanna start out with are the cream shadows. I have one from Rimmel, and this is the Wonder Cloud All Day Wear Soft Shadow. This is the shade Honey Drop. And I would say that this is similar to the Giorgio Armani. If you've seen these before, um, I use it in the same way. I also wanna point out that the Giorgio Armani does um, crease on me and so does this. And um, I like to use them a lot of time as a base or I'll just put a little bit of uh, translucent powder over it. If I really thin this out on the eye, it doesn't crease. Um, same with this one. So if you're just kind of wanting a hint of color, that's perfectly fine. But if you do build them up, they will crease. Um, the other sort of cream shadow I want to talk about is from Revlon. And these have been out since I was in high school. Uh, this is the Not Just Nudes palette. They have tons of different shades, but these remind me of the Rowan shadows. Um, like the texture is very similar. So Rowan has a couple of different formulas in here, and I'm just specifically talking about the full on cream formula. That is what I find it to be similar to. So not like the glitters and the other things. Um, and this one, it only has like this one. So it's 
the cream formula essentially in these Rowan quads. Um, but again, they all crease. So the Rowan creases and so does this. Again, you can use these as a base for other eyeshadows or you can also um, use them as toppers on other eyeshadows and it won't crease as much. You can set them with a powder, you know, whatever. Um, but they do crease. I know that a lot of people swear by the um, color tattoo sort of cream shadows. I believe it's, is it Revlon that makes those? Or Maybelline, I think it might be Maybelline. Um, I used to buy them, but I noticed that they dried out so quickly that I just stopped buying them. Those don't crease, but also it's like a thicker, drier formula, and I found that also they did make my eyes look crepey and old, so that's not my thing. So then jumping into some powder shadows, um, I have four good ones to share with you. This first one is a single shadow. Everybody I think talks about this one. It's very popular. It's the L'Oreal Infallible, and this is in the shade Amber Rush. They do have other shades. This just happens to be the only one that I've kept um, because it's a beautiful sort of shade. And it comes with a stopper in the top. Make sure you keep that stopper in there so it doesn't sort of get crumbly. Um, but there it is. It's a beautiful sort of like coppery, peachy pink with, I don't know, it, it's more of like a silver reflect as you can see, but it's just very shiny, very pretty. So I highly recommend that one. It is kind of a thicker formula. And again, go lightly with it because um, it can tend to be a bit much if you put a thick coat on your eye. This is kind of like a basic palette that I think everybody needs and it's three bucks, it's from e.l.f. So you just kind of have like your bone shade all the way up to a uh, deeper brown and they're all matte. So this is very versatile. I think it's like a beautiful sort of companion palette. If there's one thing I could change about it, if you notice it kind of leans a little bit more, say neutral, almost like, especially in this shade, they pull a little bit pink on me, um, again, just because of my skin tone. So I think it would be nice if they had these that went a little bit more into the mustard area. I think that would be better on my particular skin tone. Um, and so speaking of a mustard sort of shade, the Juvia's Place, the Nudes palette. So I like this one because you get like a variety of shades. It's very inexpensive. Um, you get three mattes, three shimmers. They have a ton of Juvia's Place palettes that um, have tons of color in them. I'm not a color person. Um, again, because I like a nice subtle eye. So the reason I really like this palette is because of this sort of murky mustard shade here. It reminds me a lot of the MAC Uninterrupted eyeshadow, which I have around here somewhere. And this always just looks super flattering on me when I, if my eye look isn't looking quite right, if it leans like a little bit like too cool, I come in with one of these and it kind of grounds the eye look for me and it complements the rest of my face better. So I really like that. Um, Juvia's Place is great because they are made, I believe it's a company that was started by women of color for women of color. So these shades will show up on any skin tone. And there are the shiny, shiny ones. You can see they're quite pretty, um, but this is where it's at for me. And then the last eyeshadow palette I wanna talk about is this one from Revlon, and this is Slight Flex. It's the Revlon So Fierce Prismatic Palette. And as you can see, this is a baked gelée formula, and I actually really like it because it is slightly nuanced, especially this shade here. If I'm like looking in it, it kind of goes green and blue and purple, and it's got like a nice be beigey sort of mauve base. Find a place to. And you can see how thin the formula is. 
So I really like to use it as a topper. If I find that my eye look is too matte, if I use something like this, I find it's too matte, I can go in and dab some of that on the lid. So I think we're gonna try to build an eye look from these eye products that I've showed you. And hopefully I don't go too heavy um, trying to incorporate and show as many products as possible. So I'm gonna pop in first with this Revlon and kind of use it as a base. Here we go. And again, not too heavy, just a nice sort of base to kind of cancel out any veins in the eyelid and to give like a nice even canvas. This formula, by the way, is kind of like a whipped kind of formula. I also like to run this under the eye. So I'm gonna get as much as I possibly can off of it into here. So, and then I go just under. All right, so now I'm gonna hop in to these and just kind of like build a little bit of shadowing around the eye. So I think I'm gonna go into this shade right here. I wanted to work it into my brush and just kind of build that into my crease. And like I mentioned before, this isn't really warm. It leans a little bit, I would say almost like a rosy, slight rosy brown, especially on my skin tone. And I'm gonna put a little bit like right up here under the front of the brow. And I'm gonna go into this light shade here and just go right under the brow. And you can kind of see that these are kind of like a thicker, more opaque formula. So I'm trying to be light with them. Um, because again, I, I like to be able to see my skin and I feel like I keep repeating myself as far as that goes. I prefer a more buildable shadow as opposed to something that's just like, bam, here is a bunch of pigment. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and swatch them so you can kind of see. It's like a very sort of opaque pigment. All right, so I mentioned that I like to use this shade to kind of bring the look um, back around if it's leaning a little bit too cool or too pink. Um, so I'm definitely going to hop into that shade using the same brush here. And I'm just going to put it right here on this outer corner. And then same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna get the small kind of detailer brush here, like a, smud like a small smudge. And I'm gonna use it to work on the bottom. And then I'm gonna go over it with this shade here, just to kind of add a little bit of shine. And I do also wanna point out that while these are all great, eye products that by the time you buy all of these to achieve your eye look that you want to have, if like you would use all of them kind of like I did to do this, you could have just purchased one sort of high end palette that you absolutely love that has everything that you need in it. So I do kind of want to point that out, but obviously you may not want the same eye look and you might just be looking for a nice everyday matte or this would work as your everyday palette. Um, but I did kind of want to point that out. This is also good as a one and done shadow as well if you just kind of want to put this over the lid and call it a day. So another thing I like to do, which I've done it like a thousand times during the video, is before I do my mascara and my lips, I like to set my makeup. I do have a drugstore makeup setting spray in which there's a big difference that I want to point out to you this is a makeup setting spray, and then what I've been spraying throughout the video has been like a rehydrating spray. Um, so I normally don't do a setting spray during each sort of um, layer of makeup. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this over to include my eyes to just kind of make everything kind of seem like skin. 
And I also wanna point out that I don't own a drugstore powder anymore. I used to, there are a couple of good ones that I would suggest, but I just found that I wasn't using them. The Maybelline Fit Me powder is good. And then also um, Boots Number no. 7 makes a really good powder as well that I enjoyed. Um, I just don't own them anymore because I've given those away because I just wasn't using them. So I'm not much of an eyeliner person, but I do have one that I wanna talk about because I don't like a ton of eyeliner. This one's perfect for me. And this is the Revlon Colorstay Micro Hyper Precision Gel Eyeliner. And this is kind of like the eyebrow pencils, only it is obviously an eyeliner. So it's more pigmented than the eyebrow pencils. And I do a very specific kind of eyeliner if I do wear eyeliner. I either will tight line, do like a nice thin tight line at the top to where you don't really notice. So I'll kind of go through and do that and show you. I'll do both today. So I kind of just go through nice and gentle. And you can kind of see the difference between here and here. I'm just kind of filling in any gaps between my lashes to kind of make it look darker. And a lot of times I'll just stop there. Or if I'm wanting something a little bit more noticeable to help like add shape to my eyes, I do go in, let me clean off this mirror a little bit. I do go in and I put a little tiny baby wing and this is perfect for that. So I usually start probably the last third of my eyelid and kind of draw a little bit into the lash line. And then a lot of people kind of like wing up before I get to the edge of my eye, like I don't go all the way down to the edge and then do a wing. I actually just go straight across and I avoid the bottom part right here. So you can kind of see a gap. And then that's all the liner I do. All right, and let's hop in to mascara. So I wanna point out that the three places that I think you don't necessarily need to splurge and the drugstore works just as well as high end would be mascaras, eyeliners, and brow products. Now, obviously like high end would have like more options and more colors and more formulas and things like that. But at the end of the day, I don't see a huge difference behind them. And I'm usually more skin focused. That's really uh, where I see the big differences. I have the Maybelline Sky High, which I like. The one thing I would complain about this is I, I like the sort of like plasticky brush. I appreciate that, but this wand is so bendable that I find that I have a really hard time pulling the wand all the way through my lashes. So that's one thing I would complain about this. I still build up and get very nice lashes from it, but I prefer a more sort of rigid wand. And then another one that I'm trying out right now is from Milani. And this is the highly rated anti-gravity mascara. And I find that this one is pretty good. Um, it again has one of those sort of plastic bristle wands, but it's bendy, but not as bendy. I wish they would make them more rigid. Um, I also find that these little nubbins are a little bit longer than the sky high, and that kind of helps to get it into the lashes to pull through. So again, I'm gonna use this little mirror here and work it through the lashes. All right, so this looks pretty good. This is one coat. I'm gonna do the other eye and then see if I feel like I need a second coat. But yeah, I feel like this is pretty good. I do wanna make the disclaimer, and I hate being that person that's like, I have really good lashes, but I do have pretty decent lashes. So if you're somebody with short lashes, you may not like this sort of like larger wand. You might wanna get like a smaller wand and see how that works. I am gonna comb through my lashes a little bit. Um, I tried to put some on the bottom and I feel like that was a mistake because again, I have longer bottom lashes and I feel like that's just a lot. So I'm gonna try to pull <laughs> some of that off the bottom. And I'm just gonna go through with this lash comb. I got this from Sonia Kashik. And then a trick that I like to do, especially when I don't curl my lashes, I didn't curl my lashes today, while the mascara is still a little bit damp, I just take my fingers and I blink into my finger 
It rubs away any excess mascara like onto the back of the finger. You'll see it there, but it also curls the lashes. Don't push too hard, especially since your lashes are a little bit damp because you don't want to rub mascara onto your eyelid. Um, but I also think that that makes a huge difference. All right, so then the last category is lip products. And again, this is a category of products that again, I don't think you have to necessarily splurge on similar to you know the mascara, the eyebrow products and eyeliner. Um, so the first one I want to talk about are these from L'Oreal. These remind me so much of the YSL glossy stains. I used to have some, they went rancid. Um, they just started smelling funny, but I like these because it's a nice gloss, obviously, and then it has a stain. You can kind of see the doe foot because this one's kind of a beigey sort of gloss, but then there's like a pinky stain left under it. Um, so I feel like it gives more dimension to the lips. Lips don't look flat, they look more natural. Um, I have three shades in this, and I wonder if they are listed anywhere on the product. Yes, I have Be Uncontrollable, Be Captivating, and Be Determined. So those are the three shades that I have. You can kind of see there. Um, I think I want to, well, I'm gonna show you the other lip products I have and then we'll decide what I'm going to put on my lips. The next one is actually very similar again to the YSL Glossy Stain. You can tell I have a product that, I have a product preference. Um, and this is from e.l.f. and I have the shade Cinnamon Dreams and they look like this. They actually look very similar to the original YSL Glossy Stain packaging. They had like a little window for you to see the color in. And this one is like, again, a beautiful sort of brown with kind of a, I would say like a berry, like a reddish berry sort of stain underneath. And then um, the last products are more lip liner-y type products. This first one is from L'Oreal Paris and this is their matte lip crayon. I don't know if this particular shade is still available. It's in Lavender Honey. And this is kind of like a subdued grade sort of like nudie mauve shade. And I really like to line my lips with it um, and then put like another product over top to kind of give it a like a pop of color so my lips don't look dead. Um, and then this is a Revlon lip liner in, I can't, in the shade Natural. So a lot of the times what I like to do is if I put something more bright on my lips, I will go through with a lip liner around the edges just to kind of blend it and so it doesn't look like too wha-bam in your face. Um, I kind of have an aversion <laughs> <laughs> to uh, lip products that are just like too much. All right, so we're gonna do the lips. I did also just try to do them a moment ago and I used the e.l.f. one and uh, it was a little bit too deep for what I'm going for with the rest of my makeup today. So I'm actually gonna backtrack. I wiped it off even though there's a little bit of a stain left behind. And we're gonna go in with the Rimmel Lip Liner and line the lips. So sometimes I line the lips first but a lot of the times I go in after I do my lips and then I put the lip liner in. Um, this lip liner is not as creamy as a lot of the other lip liners that I own that are luxury, but when you have a lip liner that's not creamy, I find that it stays in place better. And this is a really sort of, it's not like a thick, heavy formula, so it takes a lot to like get it on there. So I do like that about it, but you kind of do have to kind of like go over a little bit. Okay, so that's good enough for that. And then, do we wanna do, let's go ahead and do this one and be determined. And this is the more nudie shade. And I'm gonna sharpen this pencil and go back around the edges. All right, so that's good enough. This is my finished drugstore look. 
So I hope that you enjoyed my product recommendations and I hope that if you like other drugstore products or you like those thicker pigments that you didn't take offense, but these are just my personal preferences when it comes to doing makeup. If you have similar preferences to me um, and you found this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And I'm gonna have everything linked below if you would like to shop for these. And then if something, um, isn't available any longer that I happen to have here. I will try to link something similar for you. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.